So today we're going to be testing out a cool new capability um, that we have the ability to use now in Visual Studio 2022 17.5. With this release, they've now added the ability added the ability for us to test our functions without needing to use Postman or anything like that. The caveat here is that this is just testing individual functions. It doesn't carry over variables and setting things of that nature. But I think you'll find that the feature set that it does provide us is quite useful. So we'll go ahead and start by creating a new function. Let's just let's test it. So in here, we'll add two functions, one for post and one for get. Okay, we're not gonna need the logger because we're not actually logging. And I'm gonna set a breakpoint in each of these Okay, so normally if I ran this, actually, hold on, I'm gonna get rid of, before running this, get rid of the get here, and I'm gonna get rid of the post here. Cause we're gonna do two separate tests. And then for the post, we're obviously going to need some kind of object that we're gonna be posting. So let's go ahead and let's add one. And this guy's only going to have a name. There we go. And I'm just going to remove the null checking. This is not something you have to do um, for the purpose of demos. I just don't like seeing the squiggly lines. So then over here, um, let's go ahead and let's read the value from the string. from JSON, we're going to pull out the person object. And then what we're actually going to pass back here is we are going to just echo it. Right? And then we'll echo the name. And then because this is an asynchronous call, we have to change this to a task. And that should fix that. Then up here, um, in this case, we'll basically pass the name. Let's see, we'll call this get test. We'll call this post test. So over here, the name is being passed through a post. Over here, the name will be passed through the query string itself. So we will need to set the route such that it does that. Let's call this get test forward slash message. And then we would just pass the message in here. And then in here, we would essentially do the same thing. And then we we'll just pass the message itself. Just indicate what it is we're doing. Not that it will really matter. So very straightforward. We basically, um, when we do a get, we pass in the get information. When we do a post, we pass in the post information. And normally, if I wanted to test this, I would click this guy. And obviously, for the get, it would. I would basically have to go in the browser or something to actually uh, be able to test it. So let's open this up. 
And as you can see over here, And as you can see over here, these are two, the two messages. And I stated if I wanted to test this now, I suppose I could go into the browser. So we could open up a browser window. And type that in there and then just say this is a test. And then it should go in here and run and come back and it just displays echo get this is a test. But there's a much easier way to do that. And of course, for posts, this would not be possible. You'd have to use some kind of utility to do this. So let's stop this and let's show what we can do to make this a little bit simpler. So Visual Studio 2022 now introduces the notion of an HTTP file. So let's create a new item. And as you can see, the quick item creation is happening here. Um, so if instead of opening the full um, item template view for you to select the file type, it just gives you a short form of it and it uses the file name itself, the file extension, sorry, to determine um, the kind of template to use to create it. So in this case, the kind of file we're creating is an HTTP file. So we hit enter. And that's going to open this guy up. And then the HTTP file is relatively straightforward. Um, if you want to do a get, you just type get. And then you literally type the URL that you're trying to get. So here we want local host. And we can get the actual port from here. It's port 7137. So local host 7137 and of course I believe it's API and then get test and then this is a test you save that now you'll notice over here on the left that a little arrow uh, start button is displayed this is the button that it'll actually use to test uh, your function so let's just ensure that everything is right. Yes, the path is get test and the message is passed in there. Um, and let's go ahead and let's create a route for this uh, for the post test as well. Actually, for the post test, it doesn't matter because it's going to just use the default route that we've provided through the function app. So here we have HTTP localhost 7137 API get test in the message. And then for post, this HTTP localhost 7137 API and then just post test as we specified. So to now test this without having to open a browser, without have to having to open Postman or whatever, we can just click this button here. And as you can see, it's now going into the method. Um, to the function itself and it's running that so I'm going to uncheck that now because I've seen that run and then when it's finished running you'll see that it now posts the results out here let's see if this will work Okay, let's see why that's not working. Let's go in here and let's run that again. And it's going to go in here and message is showing us this and nothing else. And that's because, of course, it's not URL encoded. So I should go here and I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to create, get the URL encoded version of that. Okay. 
then I'll post that here. Okay, so let's run that. Let's save that and run it. is blocked now we're getting this is a test and now we're also getting this is a test so if we go back here we should now see if I run this this is a test displayed as expected and it's all working so what about for our post example so in our post example now it is taking this value here and it's expecting that we're going to post in a person so how do we do that so in much the same way uh, we can create a post and we can even do it in the same file so, we, so before to separate the different commands you use uh three pounds in space now when i type my post that'll show up and the post is essentially doing the same thing but stopping here and it's going to say post test not get test okay and of course as you know with posts we need to specify the content type and in this case it is application json right so same way you do anyway anywhere else and then we need to post a body. So to post the body, don't put it immediately next. There should be one space there for it. And then we just specify it in JSON form as we said here. So name. And then over here, we're going to put this is a post test. Okay. And so in much the same way, I can run this. Notice that I haven't stopped my, my debugger. It's still running. So I can run this. Let's click this guy. And of course, it goes in here. And then we pull the person information out, which has the value we want. This is a post test. And then when I run it, if I go back here, I'm going to uncheck this because I don't need it. If I go back here, you'll see it says this is a post test. But there's one more cool thing um, that you can actually do, um, and that's that you can have placeholder variables to um, speed up the process. Say you're passing the same values to multiple things. Now, again, this is not on the level of Postman, so don't think of it that way. This is really about testing individual um, services and not necessarily creating a test case. So this is something that you might do before you even get to Postman, right? So when you're really just trying to make sure your services are working properly, um, this is a great way to do that. So in order to set up a variable, use the at sign and you see the variable you want to set. So I'll just call it message. And in here I can now type this is a post test. And then over here I can just pass in the message by using the double ankle brackets and you see message shows up here it's a post test so if i now run this no i should probably add that colon so if i run this they see it's a post test and i can just ensure that this is working by just changing the value a little bit and as you can see, it pulls that. Now, of course, you can do the same thing here. And in here, pass message. And then when I run this, see it says echo get this is a post test one, two, three. So the value proposition here is that when you pass the messaging, as you saw, if I just took this string and passed it in, And ran this it's not URL encoding it so only the first part is showing but if I use a variable then 
it properly encodes it and passes the value back as expected. So this has been a quick um, illustration of this new HTTP file that's available in Visual Studio. It's a great tool. Go, out, go ahead and try it out for any services that you're creating. It's a great way for you to get immediate feedback on the service, immediate testing on the service without having to write a boatload of code. Um, as you can see, uh, you can get going relatively quickly testing all your services. It also supports comments. So I can go in here and I can actually comment it out. Post example, and I can do the same thing here. Okay. So you can get a little bit of scratch documentation so you can see what's going on in your application as you're going through and using it. And of course, if something doesn't work, then it'll fail and you'll know immediately that it fails. So that's been a quick introduction for the .http file, a new feature and capability available in Visual Studio 2022 version 17.5. If you like our videos, please subscribe, share them, and as always, happy coding and have a blessed day.